Hi, good morning, and welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. So we like to do a vlog and podcast every Sunday at 8 a.m. London time, and without hesitation, I'll go forward. So as I say, we like to do a wrap-up on the news um, from ZP for the week. But this week's a little bit different because I'll also do um, one of the Q&As that I would otherwise have done in the ZP Developer Zone because the person asked me to go a little bit early on it. Anyway, let me jump into it. First of all, just say that some news that we've put out for this week is um, it's not something that we um talk about an awful lot but we do have some ketone sensors as well ketone sensors are kind of um interesting to people in the sort of diabetes space and also in the kind of wellness space as well people talk about sort of ketone diets so we do have some extra data about um ketones this week we put some data out there showing um ketone data let me just have a sip of water um some other data from this week as well is that we've also put ketone sensors on micro needles as well so i'm not gonna <coughs> spend an awful lot of time talking about micro needles today but micro needles are a sort of transdermal minimally invasive um, technology that allow um, people to um, measure the um, amount of glucose in the interstitial fluid so not that I'm going to heavily talk about today, but we just put some data out there that just says, oh yeah, we do have some ketone um, sensors for um, measuring um, transdermally, that is, um, ketones in the interstitial fluid. Now, every week we do do um, at least four webinars. Um, the first one's on Monday, but it's called Sense It All. Sense It All, <coughs> something I will mention a few times today, actually. It's really a technology stack that says that ZP... A lot of what we do is um, we're giving a liquid sample, we measure it with one of our sensors, we have the electronics to pick up that signal and we can send that data um, to the cloud called Julie, which I realize I probably have no links to Julie today, but Julie is a cloud database system that we have at ZP and um, it allows us to kind of put in and store data um, up in Julie. So as I say, that's not something I'm actually gonna mention on too, too much today. But Sense It All is one of the webinars that we do do um, every week. Now, I'm going to skip over the fact that we also did a Julie webinar this week and a webinar on um, Food Sense. But on um, Thursdays, we do do webinars um, really covering technical questions that have come in from the week. So on the 26th of October, we will have a webinar. I've got a suspicion it's going to be a extensive one because um, I think it's seasonal, but the questions have really kind of come up of recent. And as I say, I'm actually going to cover one of the questions that I otherwise would have covered in that web, and I'll have to do it this morning because the person's trying to finish off a um, some sort of grant application and they need to do it quickly. Um, some sort of genuine product um, information this week is we have have released um, something called, um, well, it's part of the Sense It All platform. So Sense It All platform, um, sensors, electronics, apps, cloud systems, um, data into cloud, and then people can use an API and application program interface to call upon the data. Now, all that data that I'm so sort of talking about really is, it, it starts off with a, um, an electrochemical measurement. But there's also a sort of another side, you know, to chemistry, biology, and biochemistry and analysis, and that's um, spectrochemical uh, measurements as well. So in order to kind of... Um, increase the a number of scientists and groups that we can interact with we've also um, started to develop an oem solution an original equipment manufacturer solution for um, spectroscopy as well like everything we do it's really tiny i mean i'd almost think this is pocket in a lab i'm sorry almost pocket so almost lab in a pocket kind of technology it's meant to just run on very small um, sample volumes like 25 microliters and it'll do a spectrochemical measurement upon that sample. And with ZP, of course, you know, we don't just leave people with a raw signal. We can actually help them convert that into information through um, appropriate calibrations and etc. So it's complementary to um, the original sense it all, which is an electrochemical measurement. But so we have these conduits or these head hardware portals that all feed into an app and all the app then feeds into the Julie database. Um, by the way, Julie database is, um, you know, as you know, is free to sign up to, so you can play with that as well. And we do have um, webinars every month 
um, talking about Judy. I think the next one's something like the 26th of October. Anyway, so since, so it's the first time we've ever publicly dis, dis, um, discussed that we're actually going to do this or have done this spectrochemical system. Um, but it is complementary because in the end, it follows the same workflow that we, you know, we finessed at ZP, except this time the source of data was not electrochemical, it was spectrochemical. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a slight, um, um, I don't want to say detour, um, but um, we do do a webinar on the 26th of October. Uh, sorry, we are going to do a, yeah, a webinar on the 26th of October, which is answering questions that come in from the week. Um, but we did have a, essentially a question that came in sort of early. The guy needed, um, or the person needed a response um, quicker. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go um, very quickly um, into that webinar and just sort of say, you know, this, I'll redo this on the 26th, but I just want to answer that questions. I think one of the best ways of getting really detailed um, answers of ZP, please, please attend our workshops. Um, I'm slightly husky this morning because I was actually doing a workshop on the East Coast USA um, last week. It's pretty busy, still responding to emails and stuff. But um, I just want to say, if you see a... Um, a link jump up as well if you're following along on the vlog um the link's already underneath the youtube video if you're on the podcast then just describing that we do have some workshops um in november one in um, the uk and one in norway and if you've got questions and you're on your new to biosensors then i would definitely advise you coming to those workshops um we're also having a census summit um the one in the uk on the 19th to 20th of june 2024 is all about commercialization of electrochemical assays. Um, I think this is really relevant to the question of today, and we do have um, an early bird registration on that, so that's definitely something worth um, considering. The first s cubed we had, I think, was really an amazing res um, event, um, really well attended. Um, if you're interested in ZP and you're still sort of trying to learn, um, um, oh, nice to see Ali this morning. Hi, Ali. It's been a while, but lovely to see you. Um, if you're interested in, I'm just looking on YouTube and I can see um, one of my good friends is online. Um, if you watch the, um, if you're interested in ZP, we do have these free webinars. We have one, uh, ones on cloud data management, which is Julie. We have ones on how to commercialize technologies, which is Sense It All. We have a special one with our partners in India, and we do have our Food Sense monthly webinar. And I really advise. Um, people who are interested in commercialization to also come along to the food center monthly webinar i've put a link to that so hopefully you can find that as well and um, we're also doing something a little bit different these days as well we're doing corporate workshops as i say i was sort of slightly croaky this morning um and that's because we were on the east coast usa doing a corporate workshop and corporate workshops are definitely different you know there we sort of tailored the content um specifically for the company we were going to and um we did it at their site so it's very different doing it at somebody's site because obviously we turned up with all our equipment all our chemicals we did it in their lab they made their sensors i mean we, we stick with that philosophy and then they tested their own sensors so i think people got a real wow out of it you know really demystified the whole um you know the whole process of biosensing so question number one i'll go um i'll answer this one now so Somebody's interested in measuring glucose, troponin, ATP, lactose, oxygen, pH, um, lactate, um, AST, and ALT. The last two are um, uh, enzymes that are often associated, I think, with uh, kidney health. People are very interested in the AST and ALT um, ratios. So let me say this. All right. So um, they've got some sort of questions underneath that. And... Do you offer multi-analyte solutions? The question, the answer is yes, we do offer multi-analyte solutions. And I will give you examples of that. But it's probably worth saying that what we have on the web store is kind of the low cost entry into sort of ZP technology stack. But once you start wanting to need, you know, specializations and stuff like that, then you need, you need projects with us. A typical small scale project with ZP, we would call it like a proof of principle. A proof of principle project would be like 111 hours and... It would be something like 22,000 euros. And what can I say about that? Um, that's a sort of typical, you know, so if it's not on the web store, then we are we're talking at least those kind of um, pricing. 
but we do offer multi-analyte solutions and I will talk about that. Does the, um, they say here, does the module require calibration before each measurement? It's an interesting question, see, because I will talk today about technology readiness, ready, technology readiness level, manufacturing readiness level, um, and I will also talk about application readiness level. So what I will say is the glucose sensor is probably the, one of the most mature technologies that we have. Technology readiness level from a ZP glucose sensor is probably like eight or nine. It's manufacturing is eight or nine because we manufacture a lot of it. But it's, it's application and, and calibration is part of application. Excuse me, I just got a cough. <coughs> application it's, or calibration is part of application. In your application, I, got, I think I understand what you're trying to do. I think it can be calibration free. But if I was directly involved in the project, you know, and then I could probably figure out whether it needed calibration or not. Because I'm not part of the project, then I don't, um, and I don't absolutely know your application. I've got a suspicion that you want to put these sensors into a cell culture and leave them running for quite some time. So in the short, so the quick answer is yes, they could be the glucose sensor in particular or the oxygen sensor, the pH sensor, they, they can be calibration free in that application. That is the quick answer. Whether you can do it within the budgets that you have, I'm not sure. But if I was asked to do it as part of a sort of commercial program and I was going to make a real product out of this, then it would be calibration free. Um, can the sensor stand, withstand two weeks measurements in cell culture? Um, I'm going to go through the sensors that you're talking about, but I'm going to sort of, I think the quick answer is for my head is glucose, oxygen, and pH can. And I'm also going to advise you to sort of limit, um, in fact, I think I've completely forgotten to discuss ATP and, and lactose. Today. No, but possibly not, but anyway, I will cover them as well. Um, but of, of these sensors you've um, requested, then um, glucose, oxygen, and pH can. It's a quick answer. Um, is there an OEM version of the readout electronics? Yes, there definitely is, and I will cover that um, today as well. OEM, by the way, for those I'm sure many of you know, is original equipment manufacturer. I, mean, I think ZP's business model really is we make technologies available to people like academics. We've got our screen printed electrodes and our potential stats. Our real sort of business model is sort of what I call B2B when we help companies get their ideas um, to market. And now we're in our ninth year. So that, that stack of technologies that we have pre-existing is really matured. Um, and if you're like a company like ZP where, you know, we're ISO 3485, our documentation is really high. Our retention of engineers is really high. We're really, when I say we've been around for nine years, it's like an integration because we just built upon, you know, each year just built upon the previous year. Let me get back to the questions. Um, so we definitely have a glucose sensor. Um, one of your questions is you can run it with an OEM solution that we do have, and I will touch upon it, and it will last two weeks. And I think, if I was to be frank, if we were part of the program, we could make it calibration free. But I will talk about it. Our technology rest readiness, readiness level and our manufacturing readiness level is high. But your application is your application, and that's where that's the gap, let's say. Oxygen, <coughs> very similar to glucose. Lactate, I will discuss lactate. It's a, it's a much weaker sensor than the glucose and oxygen, and I will mention it in a minute. We do have the pH that's a robust electrode. Troponin I for two weeks, calibration free. We have not done that. The troponin I was, at ZP, we tend to do two things, continuous monitoring and discrete monitoring. We have only used the troponin I in discrete monitoring. Take a sample, put a sample on the sensor, get a result, end of, end of use of sensor. That's what we've used it for. So I can't comment on the two weeks part because we've just never done it. Lactose, um, I've got a suspicion it can be used continuously, but we've only ever used it discreetly. So I've got a bit of a preference. I realize this person also wanted to do ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and I completely forgot off the list. ATP is a robust sensor from us. Um, so I would put it in the categories of glucose and oxygen. My apologies, but it just occurred to me. Um, I basically had to put this presentation, as you can appreciate, sort of over the weekend. So um, in among all the other things that we're meant to do on weekends. Um, so glucose is good to go in this application. Oxygen is good to go. Um, pH is good to go. I'm, I put a yellow star against lactate because lactate 
is a its enzyme from detection of lactic is much weaker. It would take quite a bit of effort from ZP to make that sensor last um, two weeks. Thinking about it, and it was, it was something that we really discussed in the workshop this week. It's something that we can do, but it's going to take an effort. So I'm not going to say that the, the one on the web store will do it. And I would say that it would be a proof of principle from ZP to make that uh, make that system more robust the last two weeks. So we would need quite a large budget to do that. And um, troponin I, I've said no, um, you can't use it for two weeks because we just have no data on it. And I've said the same for lactose as well. You can't use it for two weeks because we don't have data on it. I really should have on the ATP said given that a green star. So my apologies um, for that. Um, technology readiness level, manufacturing readiness level. I've got a whole video about this. Um, it's a video I've done recently. Um, it's quite nice that um, Ali's online because I know he already seen that. He's already seen that video. But um, we do talk about this, and I do. I have a link to that video as well, which kind of says I may be confident on our sensors and our manufacturing, but when you embed that sensor into your application and start exposing it to your solutions, then you're also becoming you know part of the story, and you have to bring up you have to work on what's called the application readiness level. So TRLs are important, um, and it's something that ZP has um, covered in, in videos. Manufacturing is really important as well, because I think the biggest problem, actually, in many things is not whether the technology exists, it's whether you can actually manufacture it. Um, so at ZP, obviously, we are a manufacturer, and we've got our manufacturing really good. So I'm quite, you know, obviously, confident in our technologies. Now, the question really, then, is... Um, what I would call application readiness level. So at this moment, I don't absolutely know what these people want to do, but they do want to do something continuously monitoring for two weeks. Um, and I have touched upon that. But so you've, you've got unknowns here. You've got things like you don't know what's really in that solution. And even if you do, you're still speculating because the only way, I mean, a scientist can only ever be sort of 99.999% certain on anything. And there's always there always has to be that degree of uncertainty um because otherwise you're just i feel like science you know by its nature is not a 100 percent certain sort of thing and so you do have to leave a margin of uncertainty now when it's applications in chemistry and biology and biochemistry and you're talking about wet solutions for two weeks then your uncertainty is greater so in the end you have to get technology and you have to try it um and i think a lot of what we do at zp is actually we have the existing technologies, but it's actually the applications of those technologies that takes um, the most, in fact, I would say all the work these days, because we do have so many um, pre-existing technologies. So really this person is probably in their phase one of their application, um, and then they've got to get through phase two and phase three so they really get robustness. Um, so it's the application that's the biggest gap. One of their questions was, can we do multi-analyte? Yeah, we're really good at multi-analyte at ZP. Um, but I think they want multi-analyte probably in a flow system or some sort of... Um, you can have IVD multi-analyte. So I'm showing a, a video here where a sample comes up into um, a credit card. It gets distributed in several um, directions and we can make multi-analyte measurements on that. That's what I would describe as a discrete multi-analyte measurement. I think what this person really wants to do is measure several um, analytes in that micro well at or so, some sort of um, cell culture at the same time. Um, just a quick I'm just going to pause that for seconds. Um, so we do have a um, a little multi analyte system, but it's well, no, I should say that by that we have a system that has lots of electrodes on it, but we don't have the electronics for it, and we don't, and we also don't have it available as a glucose, oxygen, lactate, pH. So I'm just saying to this person, I, I recognise the question. Um, and we do have solutions for it, but us to really get involved in multi-analyte, um, I have actually given you a link to it. For us to get involved directly, again, we're going to need a sort of a minimum of a proof of principle um, budget. And when I sort of, you know, um, for doing ALT and AST, that's a proof of principle budget. To, to make multi-analytes, that's a proof of principle budget. These things can really kind of um, build up on one another. So the quick answer is we do offer multi-analyte solutions um, but I would consider it needing a proof of principle um, budget. If you see um, a link jump up, I've already put it underneath the video. Um, and I would ask you um, if you need us to advise you on this. Unfortunately, what we're really, we do with universities, we're often involved in 
things like Horizon 2020 um, in the UK. We're involved in a lot of um, EPSRC grants. Those really help us work with universities. If we're not helping, uni helping universities and they need our consulting, it's much harder um, to be involved. But we do have the technology on the website and we do try to give free advice through these webinars. I think with these, this person, I was thinking that there's um, they can consult with us, but they can also come to a workshop with us. I hope they would come to the one in Norway or come to the one in London. I think that would be really useful because then we can just kind of have a one-on-one -on, -one on this and really kind of go through it a little bit more. Can the sensors withstand two weeks measurement in cell culture? I have said I would be much more confident in the oxygen, the um, the oxygen, the glucose, the pH. Um, and I would be quite um, confident in the ATP as well. If it, we wanted lactate for two weeks, we'd have to do a proof of principle on that. So I think that's the third one I said we'd have to do a proof of principle on. So yeah, glucose, oxygen, pH. And I should have really clicked on um, ATP as well, adenosine triphosphate um, as well, if that's interesting to you. Um, just getting onto the electronics, the last question in, in, in the list was, do you have an OEM solution um, on the electronics front? The quick answer is we have a great one these days. Um, we've This is kind of like a generation sort of two or even maybe even three for us. Um, but this is something that we do have um, available. It's a little um, single purpose um, board. So for each analyte, you need a different board. Um, the board I'm clicking in the video that we're showing online is just, we're showing this little um, board, single purpose biosensor circuit, just touching onto a I'm a developer's board. A developer's board obviously allows you to communicate with it. This board will also connect to our sensors as well. Um, so the quick answer to your question is we definitely have um, an OEM solution. And I definitely, on the previous page, have a link to it. And I have put that link also um, underneath this video um, as well. Let me just play this and see what we've got here. Whoops, Daisy. Just want to turn the volume off. I just want to say, if you're in your R&D phase um, and you're in the lab and you're trying to troubleshoot, you actually need a potential stat at that point. So the only potential stats that I will support is obviously from ZP. This is called the Emma potential stat. It's very elegant. It's got six independent channels on it. And this potential stat will allow you to um, use it with our glucose, oxygen, pH uh, type sensors. So we do have a, an R&D solution as well. And yeah, I do have a link um, for it underneath this um, underneath this page and also underneath the video on the website. So I'm just gonna try and remind myself, we are interested in measuring glucose, troponin, ATP, lactose, oxygen, pH, lactate, AST, and ALT. So glucose is a very robust sense. We've had it a long time. It It is built to be continuous monitoring, so that's a good one. Oxygen, pH are the same. We've been putting a lot of work over the years on lactate as well. It's just a much weaker enzyme and we really have to do a proof of principle on lactate um, in order to make lactate work. Um, I have a, um, ATP is also quite robust and you should be okay with that. Troponin I, we've only ever used it um, as a point of care and the same for lactose as well. And I really forgot to mention AST and ALT. Well, I have mentioned them, but I should re-mention them. Um, we don't have them available on the web store. We have worked with them with clients, but we would do those as a proof of principle. So it's not something you can buy off our website. Um, we do offer multi analyte solutions. You'll find that they're not available on the web store, but you will find I have links. I just want to say hello to Jeff Chan. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, you will find that we do have links um, to these multi analyte solutions. So you can at least you know learn something from those webs. Uh, from the website but um, we don't have anything available on the web store and that would have to be a proof of principle um, study with ZP as well um, you don't require calibration necessarily but you have to work on the application readiness level it's a si whether you need calibration or not calibration is like a systems level problem and I say that and sort of sound a bit mysterious on it because I know that if I start making assumptions about your systems and really we need to be engaged on that program to really help you. Otherwise you have to develop the application yourself or just follow along with ZP over the years. Cause we put more and more information out in fact, um, all the time. So, um, but at this moment, I'm not ready to say that we are calibration free in your application. Um, can the sensors withstand two weeks measurements? 
if you want to be low risk on this, glucose, oxygen, pH are the, are the ones to go for. And there is an OEM version. It's called the Single Purpose Biosensor Circuit. Um, it's available on our web store. Itself is very tiny. It's got a little breakout board to allow you to program it or play with it. Um, and that's what I would um, recommend. So I'm going to say thank you very much. I just want to say thank you to Ali and Jeff this morning. I appreciate it. Um, and thank you to the questioner for his questions. Hope you appreciate it. We I put it together. Um, I think it was during the Saturday. So um, slides a little bit rougher than I would otherwise liked. Um, but I'll probably redo this on the Thursday, 26th of October webinar as well. So I may have to add some extra thoughts in on that as well. So thank you for following along with this unusual podcast and vlog this morning. Like I say, we did two halves. We did our normal kind of wrap up of news for the week. And we also did this extra technical question. If you've got any questions for ZP, um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Zimmerpeacock.com slash contact. And um, you can see that we're quite responsive in answering questions. Okay, thanks very much.